This video is not sponsored and has no adverts. Hello and thanks for joining me for some more landscape photography. Now I had completely different plans for today, uh, but I've got up and there's some beautiful morning light out my window, a bit of mist, and I also happen to know that it's high water on my local beach in about three and a half hours. So I'm going to go out and do some photography instead. Um, but what I had intended to do was to review this 20 litre everyday backpack from VSGO. I'll put a link to it in the description. Now, I wasn't going to review this bag at all. Uh, VSGO wrote in and they said, we've got a bag we'd like you to take a look at. I said, look, I'm really sorry, but I don't want to be doing any more gear reviews. Um, they said, we understand, not a problem at all. Can we send it you anyway? And if you like it, just give us a 30 second mention in any of your videos. And they were so polite and pleasant. I thought, yeah, that's the least I can do. Um, not a problem. I would give the bag away as a competition prize for the photography pubcast because we'll probably do a Christmas competition like we normally do. And it's usually me that supplies the prizes because none of the other boys get any sponsorships anyway. Um, so it came through, lovely Mrs. G spots it and says, oh my goodness me, not another camera bag. Well, you know what it's like, chaps. We, we tend to like our baggage. Um, but she said, you can't give it away, it's far too good. And I thought, oh, okay. And she was right. It is really good. Now the key thing for me, quite nicely, is that it fits in between the two main bags that I'm kind of using at the moment. I've been using for about the last 12 months. This is the Wandered 31 litre sling uh, a backpack, which I use uh, for day hikes. You'll have seen it this year up a mountain with me. Um, I need the extra capacity for a mountain hike, especially if I'm out all day. I'm generally just doing a bit of down the local beach of an evening, I'd take this, my nine litre wandered sling. Um, and this is actually my favourite camera bag because for the most part, I can get pretty much everything I need for a day shooting, as long as I don't need too many extra layers or sandwiches or whatever. Um, so that's what I had. This came through and sits really nicely in between them, 20 litres. But also it's perfect for things like business trips. You know, I've been to see business clients with it. If I go out and do a commercial shoot, this is a much easier way of transporting all of my clobber because I can fit that entire shelf in there, no problem at all, loads of extra space. But I've also been taking it out um, for day shoots when I'm not doing too much in the way of hiking. It's kind of pitched as uh, a, up against the likes of Peter McKinnon and Peak Design. It's, it's that sort of ilk. I'll link in the description to some other reviews of it because I'm not interested in doing a big long review of it. Um, but what I will say is if you're in the market for a 20 litre or thereabout sort of size bag that you can double up not just for photography but all sorts of things, this is perfect. It's brilliantly well built. Um, it, the material is almost waterproof. Now the other thing is I'm, uh, my abuse of equipment is legendary. Um, I, you know, th my OM1, I'd had it less than a fortnight when I dropped it onto a rock. This has stood up to everything that I throw at it. It's made out of some sort of waterproof uh, canvas material. Nice magnetic closures, side panels for tripods and water bottles, all the stuff you'd want from a bag. Um, so yeah, check it out, have a look. Anyway, that's enough about this. Uh, as I said, it can fit everything off my photography gear shelf. So let's get down the beach before the, uh, I'm saying before this mist burns off, but to be honest with you, I'm probably not gonna make it in time. I'm still going though. As you can see, I didn't get down here in time to take advantage of the mist this morning. So, uh, can't have everything. And it's now 
a beautiful day, absolutely glorious, which makes a change because it's probably the first decent day we've had in three months. Flat blue skies. I'm not worried about that. I'm not one of these photographers that says you can't do anything with flat blue skies. The sort of thing I've got in mind actually requires some nice side light from the sun. The brighter the better, if I'm honest, because I want to have it bouncing off those rocks that I'm going to be pointing my camera at. Uh, but I brought you down to where I normally come with a dog and do handheld stuff. If you follow any of my social medias, you'll know that I usually put an image or two up at a weekend because I carry a camera. But there's only so much I can do with that. And I don't think I've ever actually brought you down to this spot before. Um, there's a wide expanse of, of grassed over sand dunes. It's a beautiful location. Uh, and there's a lot you can do here as a photographer, so I do recommend it. Um, it's just that because I do a lot of handheld work here, I don't usually come down with all my gear. Uh, but because this is a bit short notice and impromptu, I'm only five minutes from the house, so that's why we've come here. Anyway, time to get down to the beach and see what's going on with that tide. What I've got in mind here today, as you can see, the tide is still quite some way out. It's not going to be where I need it to be, probably for at least an hour, hour and a half, but that gives me time to get set up. I'm really only looking for one image today, and it will be making advantage of these rocks here. What happens is, as the tide comes in, it runs into these gullies and isolates the rocks. So what I'm going to do is start by scoping out exactly where I need to be. And the way I do that is that I put my 25 millimeter. Sometimes I use my 17, but I, I'm not really after a particularly wide shot today. So the reason I use my 25 millimeter is because that's sort of standard eyesight field of view. Uh, it may well be that I end up not shooting at 25, but that's kind of my starting point. And what I'll do is just move around here and work out exactly where the tripod needs to be. So what height, how far forward, how far back, left, right, all that sort of thing. To get myself set up, get my tripod in position, dial it all in, sort out my filtering, and I'll come back to you in a moment and let you know how I've got myself all set up and then we'll just wait for the tide to come in. I really like this sort of photography. For me, landscape photography is about relaxation. When you're rushing about, there's nothing relaxing about it. I've had plenty of time to get myself set up here uh, and finesse my composition. So I'm going to talk you through how I've got myself set up and uh, still got about 45 minutes before I'm actually going to start shooting, even though the tide is coming in quicker than I thought. I've put my bags way back up the beach because I've got my wellies on. I fully expect to be standing in the water before I'm all done because I don't want any of this foreground as sand. I want it with a, a layer of water on it. So I'll talk you through how I'm all set up. Um, but just one thing that's worth a mention before I do that, and I got asked about this uh, when I was out with some uh, people recently, this battery that I've got clamped to the tripod leg is really useful. Now this battery is the Momen V99 Pro. I'll put a link to it. Absolutely brilliant, 99 watt hours. And I run it into my camera with a, a little type C connector. It's actually a V-mount battery, which is a standard mounting system for uh, cine equipment. Um, I use it professionally for my lighting rig when I can't um, get to a power outlet when I'm working uh, on commercial stuff and I'm on site with a client. And this will run my lights for a really long time. And the V-mount system allows you to very quickly swap batteries in and out. The mounting plate itself is a cold bore mounting plate. Again, I'll put a link to it. 
and you've just got a little uh, screw clamp so you can clamp it to your tripod leg and when you're doing long exposure work like this it's absolutely perfect because I can keep my camera switched on all day uh, pretty much um, and uh, you know if I'm filming to talk to you I can top everything up as I go along and it's much easier than having a standard little battery bank um, it's not particularly heavy weighs just shy of a pound I wouldn't lug it up a mountain but for something like this it's absolutely perfect so I thought it's worth a mention because I was putting it on a tripod when I was out with as I said some people and they were like what on earth is that um, so yeah it's the um, Moman V99 Pro V-mount battery uh, with a cold ball mounting plate. Uh, so uh, yeah, have a look at those if you're doing long exposures and you want your camera on all day long. Of course I could change the camera battery, but um, to be honest, this is much easier than faffing about with that. And also it, it means that I don't have to change the camera battery. Okay, so let's talk about composition. That's obviously the first thing. Now, because I'm familiar with this location, I knew pretty much where the camera was going to be. Um, so finessing the back, forward, left, right, focal length was pretty straightforward. But it's worth taking the time over that, as I mentioned earlier. The only other question then was, do I have the camera up high or down low? The problem with down low is that these dark rocks here in my mid-ground wouldn't have any separation from the rocks behind them if I did that. So I've got up as high as I can go and that's perfect for this composition. And then the main thrust of the composition are these fingers of rock that come in from the sides and the bottom corners leading you into the centre of the frame. And it's that nice symmetry, that symmetrical kind of V-shape, inverted, that I was aiming for. So. That's the composition, pretty straightforward, not a great deal of sky. I might just ease it down just a touch about there. It's bringing in a little highlight of, of beach debris at the bottom there. I'm not worried about that because the sea will wash that away before I take my final shot. The exposure, I've set my aperture at f8. Uh, and if I use the internal ND filter, which I'll show you, I've currently got it set to two stops. Um, now, the advantage of using this setup is I can very quickly change the internal ND, but I've also got my CPL, which is one stop, and a six stop filter on the front of the camera. And that's what gets me my two second exposure. So now all it remains to do is to just wait for the tide to roll in and start bringing some surf into this gully underneath the camera. When it's doing that with my two, three second exposure, I'll finesse it when I see what the surf is doing, obviously. And that's why I'm using the internal ND so I can quickly adjust my shutter speed um, rather than have to be swapping filters. Oh, and of course, I've got my remote shutter, as you'd expect. Um, so I'm all set up, I'm all ready to go. Um, but yeah, the, the further rocks will be separated by water. And really, I'm not going to have any sand in the image. This is about the rocks sticking out the water. I might dial in a bit more ND and run it up to about four or five second exposures. We'll have a look and see how that works. Um, but if I can get one interesting shot out of this morning, I'll be more than happy. One last thing worth mentioning before um, I go and sit on a rock and wait for the tide, is that uh, the side light on these rocks is essential to this image. And that's why a flat blue sky day is perfect, because if these rocks weren't catching any sunlight, they're pretty drab. And so if, if the sun was going behind clouds as the day was going on, the perfect wave might not coincide with the perfect light. So this is my lesson in what you can do when you've got a bright blue sky and if you happen to be on holiday down at the coast take your camera along because you never know what you can achieve so i'm just starting to get 
some ripples in the foreground now and I've actually only had to wait about 20 minutes since I last spoke to you. It's coming in really fast. Um, it may be that I end up blending more than one exposure so I get just the right amount of ripple in the foreground but I also want a bit of white water and surf in the background in the image. So it's just going to be a case now of taking a whole bunch of images just grab one for some surf back there. There's not enough going on in the foreground yet. That's quite a nice surf shot. So if I don't get one that has all the elements in it with a single exposure, I've now got the option to blend something up. I think I'm about 10 minutes away from serious shooting for this uh, foreground area. And that's going to be where I might go for a slightly longer exposure. Two seconds is perfect for the surf, but I might dial in a little bit more internal ND to, uh, to extend that shutter speed. Just another second or so. I'm thinking three or four seconds for this foreground area. I'm shooting the foreground now. As you can see, waves are coming in and I'm constantly adjusting the internal ND. I'm just going to run it up to two seconds. So I'm going to use an ND8. No, tell a lie. ND4. That gets me two seconds. Don't forget I've got a six stop on the lens. This is great fun. I've got to be honest, this is really good fun. I'm really liking the effect of the foreground at about two seconds. I'm hopeful that I've stuffed the tripod legs far enough into the sand that it won't move. Okay, it's time to make a break for it. The reason is the rock over here on the uh, right hand side is now pretty much underwater. So it's gone beyond the effect that I'm looking for. I don't want that to be submerged at all in my image. So let's, let's move back a bit. Well, I've had an absolutely spectacular time on the beach down here this morning, and I'm so glad I was able to bring you along with me. It's something I've been meaning to shoot, but timing the tide to run through these rocks at exactly the right point with the right light has proved problematic in the past. I have attempted to bring you down and it hasn't worked out, so you never saw the failures. Anyway, one last thing to say uh, before I wrap up here today. I mentioned at the beginning of the video that my channel has been completely demonetized and uh, none of my videos will ever be sponsored. Not unless someone pays me an inordinate sum of money and they're not likely to do that. So um, the reason for that is that I've decided to set up a Patreon. Now there's going to be an awful lot of benefits if you decided that you felt you'd like to support me on Patreon um, for a very small monthly fee. I've kept it pretty small, well into single figures. Um, so this uh, video, for example, uh, will be featured on Patreon where I show you how I process the exposures that we've just captured this morning and bring together the final image that I'm about to show you. There is a whole heap of other things as well, so uh, hopefully there might be something of interest to you. I'll put a link in the description to my page on the website where I tell you more about it. Um, but I'm going to leave it there for this one. Thank you ever so much for coming along with me. I really hope you've enjoyed it. And if you have, why not subscribe and join me next time. Cheers. Cheers.